Welcome to another episode of Tandaza Mkeka, um, an Unmothering the Woman podcast. And today we have another very interesting conversation and discussing, we'll be here discussing a topic that's often overlooked, um, but incredibly important. The complexities and the power dynamics involved in hiring domestic workers and what that looks like. When we were framing this topic, it was from the point of view of when a domestic mothering and domestic workers what does that look like when they finish you know are domestic workers also mothers you know when we started thinking about unpaid care work we started thinking about the burden of mothering other people's children and what that looks like so with me today i have very two awesome individuals um i'm a Kovewala, who's been a long time a friend okay. i've known her for a really long time she's been in the space of gender, I'd say, uh -huh. and health yeah. for a really long time. Uh -huh. um, and Maureen, yes. who works with um, Amakove. Uh -huh. So we have titled this episode, Our Other Wives. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I know why you're laughing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I know why we are all laughing. Because this episode came from a place where, jokingly, or sometimes you'd be like thinking... Um, we all have nannies. We've mm. been privileged in this country or mm. in this, you know, to have nannies that we can afford. Mm -hmm. And when we think about our other wives or my sister, when you start saying things like my DM yeah. or my house manager, mm. those are things that I we have to sit here and put into perspective mm. and have the conversation when we say, Hey, we can't be beyond. Yeah. She's the one who helps me manage my home. And you're not referring to your partner. Mm. You're not referring to your husband. Mm. You're not referring to your you're referring to that person that we refer to as nanny, mm. my nanny, mm. my DM, domestic Bunch. manager, my botch, mm. as derogatory as mm. that is. Mm -hmm. But this other person who helps you to manage your home exactly. is our other wife. Mm. And so I'd start with asking you to introduce mm. yourself in, yeah. in the capacity where we are here. Sure. Why are you here talking about domestic yeah. workers? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Aminia, for, for these sessions. And uh, it's good to just have a space to give them a voice. And I think uh, that you're doing a fantastic job. My name is Amakove Wala. Um, I'm a medical doctor who doesn't see patients. But I do, I'm very passionate about social impact. Mm and social impact from the health space all the way to other aspects of their social lives. I ran, uh, I founded and ran a domestic worker placement bureau called Nyerai Home Care Services. It's now six years. Mm. And it, it was born from um, my experience, my own experience. So I've been a mother for 15 years. I have four children. I have a son who's 15 and I have triplet girls who are 13. Mm. So it's from that experience of uh, when I, especially when I had the triplets, I needed help, a mm. lot of help, <laughs> more help than was necessary uh, or rather was needed with the firstborn. Mm. And I think during that time, I really experienced what it needs to, to either get good help or bad help. Also, what does it mean to balance? Because you're a mother, you're a wife maybe, or you're a career woman. How do you balance all these balls? Mm, mm. And I learned from an early age, or rather an early time, to basically accept help. And so I think we're here to, to see what is this type of help yeah. that we have in our homes. So when you say accept help, is it from family? Mm -hmm. Or is it... Oh, okay. Yeah. Domestic um, worker, yes, yeah. but also family. Yeah. Also, so accepting general community help. Exactly, because yeah. parenting is not a single person's job. Mm. Uh, of course, we have had, we are getting into the bonded spaces where people don't even know their neighbors. And be, before some of us who grew up in the village, you know, you were parented by anyone who's an adult. Yeah. Um, and that helped uh, because if, if your parents are away for um, a job, there'd, all be, there'd, there'd always be someone who's keeping an eye on, mm. whether consciously or unconsciously. But in this time and age, then we have to be very deliberate about one understanding that we do need help, but two, accepting that help, yeah. and three, finding the right help. Yeah. 
That's true. Mm-hmm. That's actually all of it. <laughs> <laughs> so Maureen, tell us why um, you're here. Mm-hmm. Uh, my name is Maureen Agamana, former domestic manager, mm-hmm. but now I'm manager at Nyerai. It's a privilege. Uh, they believed in me. I trained at a center for domestic training. That's after, you know, mom failed to manage to mm-hmm. raise school fees for college. You have other siblings and you're like, no, what do I do? What else? You can't just sit there, see your mom suffer. Mm-hmm. You are like, what else can I do to help her, like, go through the process? Yes. So, so finding so, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, finding domestic work. First, I went to the training center. I got the knowledge placed. That's where my journey started. Mm. And I had to love the work because finally that's what you can afford. Yeah. So all I can say, if a parent can't manage to take the, the daughter or the son to college, university, there is still other work you can still do and make it better. So let's go back to where we laughed about our other wives. Mm-hmm. Let's start from there. Mm-hmm. Because I find it a controversial subject. Yeah. And at Unmothering, we have we look at things very with a very feminist lens, mm-hmm. uh, as as other organizations do. But I feel like for us, we have to e- examine what what we do as both employer. So I'm just going to do that. Yes. Yeah, I'm not calling you a domestic worker, but I'm just saying there's you two know, sides. There's two sides of yeah. each coin, right? Yes. Your employer, mm-hmm. you have employed mm-hmm. Maureen. Yes. Um, to work for you. Mm. You have triplets. You're mm. tired. Mm. I'm assuming you're still, let's mm. say, medical mm. doctor. So mm. you're doing long hours. Mm. When you come in, you're expecting to rest mm. because someone else is looking after your kids. Uh-huh. Yeah? yeah. You've empowered, let's say you've empowered this person or even not, mm. but you've given, you're paying them money. So you're yeah. expecting them to do their job the same way yeah. you're doing 16 hours at mm. work, mm. complaining or not complaining, mm-hmm. you're still doing the job. So mm. you're expecting Maureen. Yes. Mm. To still pull 16 hours looking mm. after your kids mm. because you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Where can she? Mm-hmm. So our other wives come in. Yeah. Yes. How fair do you think about it? <laughs> How fair or uh, unfair? And let's hear from both. Yeah. I think our society is in a transition space. Mm. So the traditional roles of the wife, and maybe that's the terminology we may need to debate about uh, this. What, what's the role of a wife? And I think traditionally wives were expected to keep a house, um, to ensure the house has, is clean, it has mm. food, and, and, and bear children and, and take care of those children. So in return, then the man was seen to be the provider who comes in, you know, goes out, gets the daily bread, brings the daily bread back home. Mm. But roles have changed and uh, we are seeing different setups of families from your traditional father, mother to single parents to orphans to whatever other social strata there is. So there was, there's a big push for the wife to go out and also fend either from expectation that uh, maybe the the man is not providing enough or that the wife really wants to go and Mm. they have other interests apart from taking care of children. And so that necessitated the need to have someone else come into the home Mm. Uh, because traditionally we didn't have, you you as a woman was not expected to to be overburdened by children. Like it was supposed to be a very small role. Um, So... That's how I see the evolution of having the other wife, which uh, I, I think for me will still be contentious because then we have packaged that role um, and restricted it into, you know, staying in the house and taking care of children. And that's also qualifying it to be a very small role compared to me going out, driving, running a business, or running or being a head of an organization. Mm. You you quit the work at home to be very uh, minute, maybe, mm-hmm. and to think that it's easy. Yeah, and um, I think that's how this part of the world, because labor is accessible, and um, there are many people willing to do it, mm-hmm. and so people are willing to pay far much less 
than what that work entails. So I think we're in that space where such conversations now start helping, will help people to see what does this other wife really do? Mm. Yeah, because during COVID period, I think people are forced to stay at home with their children and yeah. many did not know their children. Yeah. Many did not, you know, you, you've you never really sat, apart from maybe people who are stay-at-home wives, and even those, they're those who still have help. So I would shift and say that by terming it a wifey role, there's a level to which the perception of society is that it's an inferior uh, piece of job mm. compared to someone who actually goes out. Mm. And and uh, there's now that push of recognizing what is this that they do. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so I'm going to shift the question mm -hmm. differently to you because she's answered it from a point of view of what society sees. Mm. But the contract you have with your boss mm. in the home mm. requires you to be a project manager. Yes. Mm. Be a house manager. Mm. Mm. So when you, when you think, and, and, and I think we use the term our other wives loosely because... Yeah. Mm. And and I think it's been said to me before, you expect this person to run your home mm -hmm. in your absence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Think about using, Niki Kwambia Unga Nimbili, think about how you're going to use your Unga Nimbili. The way, eh, the way, the way <laughs> I would. Mm. In your home, you wouldn't. Mind. Yeah, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't, no, you wouldn't misuse. Mm -hmm. So when you're thinking about a house manager, you're expecting them to invest home <laughs> as you would, hmm. which is unrealistic, mm -hmm. literally, because yeah. you don't know where I came from. Mm -hmm. You can't imagine me to have the same luxury mm -hmm. or not, not or whatever. You might have come from the rural area where you have your own unga. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't see a reason why I should be just spending only two packets of unga. You know, like there's a way where, as a domestic worker, this employer has put you in a box. Uh -huh. But when I th think about so not answering the question and putting it to you, uh -huh. what does the expectation of the employer uh -huh. expecting you uh -huh. to manage that home, her home, while she's not there, look like? Mm. Because you have your own home. I'm assuming uh -huh. you're off Saturday, Sunday. Mm. You have your own home, you have your own yeah, children. Yeah. There's a specific way you want to you know, mm. but for seven days a week, you're in this person's home. And in her absence, mm. 16 hours, I'm in the doctoring. Mm. You have her kids mm. and she's expecting you to run her house the same way. What does that look like for you? Uh, it's a bit of a challenge in a manner that people vary. Mm. Mm. The employers vary. Kuna ule atao nunua kwa kiwango fulani. Atakuambia this one, I want it to run for this time but again maybe there are kids in that house so if you try to follow up to some point it can't mm -hmm. but again you need to to live according to her not according to what you think mm -hmm. or how you think you need to go according to her so it's a bit of challenge to some point because there are few who will understand or subunimation mm -hmm. but again there are those who will say I just bought it the other day. What has happened? So, mm -hmm. Napata, there is that a bit of. So let's emotion. let's go back to that. You've mm -hmm. you've you've you're a mom. Yes. How many kids do you have? Two. Two kids. Yes. She has four kids. You have two kids. Mm -hmm. Those children expect you mm -hmm. to come home. Mm -hmm. um, let's say because there are two different types of let's say workers at the time. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. I live in and day day bags. Mm -hmm. So. I feel debugs are even more challenging because you're going to spend the whole day with four kids. Uh -huh. And when we talk about managing uh -huh. a home, you're not only managing the home, you're managing the family. Oh. Because if she's doing 16 hours, if she's doing 12 hours, whatever that looks like, she's not going to come home and bath the kids. Oh. And do oh. she's expecting that you've already done that. Uh -huh. And she's expecting to rest. So even if you're going to leave at six, uh -huh. and then you exchange, I'm expecting that you've already done all of these things. But uh -huh. then uh -huh. you're going to have to go home and do the same and thing. And do the same thing. Mm. 
What does that look like? Uh, it entails a lot of sacrifice mm. and commitment. Then what do you want? Mm. When, why are you doing this job? Is it because it's, it's going to help you or unafanya to because because you man be or today you'll do the washing and do the, that and so it entails a lot. Mm. Yeah. So it, it it what matters here is what do you want? Why are you here? Because if it means washing and doing all this other thing, then she can pick anybody from anywhere and do the same. But why will you come tomorrow and the other day and the other day till you malize mwezi? I mean, I understand that, Maureen, yes. but but he wants you to truly, truly tell me how you feel. As so a like, mother. As a mother. As a mother. For your own. Obvious, you are worn out. Mm. So how do my choka. Mm. Mm. Your kids are there. Mm. Mom do this, mom do that. Even to this point, sometimes I get home a bit late, mm. but I have a little one. He, mm. he just turned to the other day. But you'll see he'll want to jump around. You have sometimes he refuses the mm. uh, I also um I have a clothes somebody to oh, help yeah. me. Mm. You see when I'm in the house, he'll say, Mom is going to shower me today. Mm. But again you're like <laughs> <laughs> Okay. But you have to do it, yeah. Because finally, it is yours. Mm -hmm. Finally, it still waits for you. It's okay. You you get a bit worn out, mm -hmm. but again, the the other side, it's because it's for your own good to help you. But this one is yours. Your duty. You have maybe to cook or to shower the baby. Yeah, it's a bit of challenge, but. It depends. Do you, mm. do you, you understood the question how I asked it? Right? Yes, mm. yes, I understood in such a way that I think this, it's a cycle because um, she needs to perform on this side. Yes. She needs to wear two cups. Because mm. me, I am wearing only one. Mm. That one of my own children. I'm not mm. mothering. Yeah, the cause, other one. Because yeah. it's yeah. basically she's mothering my children. Yes. Yeah. 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 So for those hours, which for those hours that I'm not, yeah, even when I'm around, mm. they want to put my feet up and someone brings the food, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I see what you're asking in terms of, so Maureen, for you, once you've mothered my children yes. with all my stress, I've also brought <laughs> yes. the stress, the children are most, they're also maybe a handful, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you still have to go back home mm -hmm. and mother your own children. I yes. think, do you still have the energy, mm. the passion, the what makes you? That's yeah. where. Just a bit of small resentment. Yeah. For the first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where the, the term commitment and sacrifice comes in. Mm. Because if you, if you, you don't have any other thing to do. Na huku kwa uyu, kwa uyu klai, kuna mtoto. Where's the actual case? Because Kunam Toto, because you have kids, mm. you will sacrifice, you will commit yourself, you will give it your all. So that even if you are tired to some point mm. because of the passion, and finally you remain you, you still have to mm. do your part. So maybe I'll give an example yeah. of even something I'm currently, and she knows about that my current situation. So I have someone from outside the country mm. who's taking care of my children. Mm. And they have a three-year-old in the other country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, you can hear her pain mm -hmm. in terms of when she's communicating at home. Yeah. She's told, because the child is being taken care of by her mother, you know, the child is sick or send money for this. Or you can hear the child, I mean. Yeah. So then recently she asked me, can I bring the child over? Because it's, this is, she's still a mother. Yes. yes. Uh, but I am not able to to now accommodate a mother and a child. In your home? Yeah, that would be a very ideal situation, mm -hmm. but we are not able to. So you see, you, you get to that space where now you are two mothers, and, and, and sometimes I figure out, and uh, I've told her I, I need her placed elsewhere where that arrangement is possible, because yeah. there are people who are who do not have maybe financial commitments or they have space or whatever, mm -hmm. they can take in a, a domestic worker with a child. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it, you, even you as a mother, you feel pain because you've seen your child's milestones. Yeah. This one is hardly there. Maybe yeah. only the long holidays they're yeah. able to go back. Um, so they're parenting again also remotely. Yeah. So that is, it, it is a big uh, situation for, for many 
So I'm going to go let me ask mm. this question. I'm going to mm. ask some hard questions. No, just ask. Yes, ask okay. hard questions because we are here in a yes. safe space. Yes. To meet under some keka. We mm. are literally having this conversation in our, mm. in our kitchen. Mm. Are we benefiting from these women's labor? Because mm. if you think about it, mm. and and to answer honestly, I know you're saying it in terms of, and you're not going to get fired from your own. No. <laughs> it's nothing to do. Yeah. It has nothing. Yeah. And no. mothering, whatever, yeah. it's just a conversation yes. based on your yes. experience yes. and not yeah. working yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the organization. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. So the question is, you're doing this for the money mm. yes. or is it for the passion or for the compassion or for the empathy? Mm. Do you love Amakove's kids so much? You're like, oh my mm. God, for 16 hours a them. day, I'm just going to mother these kids to death. Mm. Now there we go. <laughs> 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 tafuta kazi mm. na una obviously ukitafuta kazi unajua ni kazi gani unatafuta mm. now as a trained domestic worker mm. hiyo ndio kazi nimepata now that's where it begins hii kazi that's why we have unapata mtu amepiga mtoto amemchuna mm. is a little one mm. because ana hiyo roho it's not passion and they also kufanya hii kazi na I love this kid just like mine at home mm. because finally hata we wako kuna place umemwacha mm. so if you do it with the passion you give it to your your all then it's going to be okay you won't mm. feel the pain mm. you will not feel like mbona ameniache huyu mtoto na analia you will not feel it ni bidii yako utahakikisha hata kama nikulia ta how can i handle her kama hakuli what do i do yeah, yeah. that mm. passion that your heart That's why it begins. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So, are mm-hmm. we benefiting from that? We well, are. Yeah, we are. And that's why I, I I started by saying when our t- definition of what a wife does mm. because it's been put to just a few boxes. You don't see the emotional mm. burden because you can have someone helping you but you have a child who's cranky yeah. and colic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That drains you psychologically. Yeah. Um I've had situations where Uh, a lady has had a child especially the young ones and they've gone out clubbing mm-hmm. uh they are like 23 year old staying with their mother then they've asked us for for domestic workers so you you hear complaints that apart from even during the day at night I'm also the one mothering this yeah, yeah. this child yeah. it's it is a the i think the we've not quantified the emotional Dream. commitment Tax. and investment it's, it's emotionally taxing. yes yeah. and and we do not compensate adequately for that yeah. um the second one is sometimes we are jealous because me i'm working 16 hours the child will become attached especially if she's good yeah. as morin mm-hmm. the child becomes attached actually <laughs> i've seen situations where the nanny wants to go and the children Stay are breaking this. down yeah Um so there's also that fear for some of this uh some of us as mothers mm. that my working out or my being away um is costing me because then the child gets attached to a secondary person. Yeah. And so that is also something that uh many employers uh face whether consciously or subconsciously. Mm. Um but then generally we have not appreciated so generally once we appreciate and once we stop to think what does this person do mm. what and how do they impact too. yes how do yeah. they impact on my own children mm-hmm. how does it affect their are they able to hire their own nanny. their own nanny at a rate that that own nanny will provide good care to their child mm-hmm. because if you pay someone Let's say six thousand, seven thousand. How much do you think they're paying the person that is taking care or where they're leaving yeah. their child? Mm-hmm. So you see, it trickles. Your own appreciation trickles down to how oh. one, yeah. two other children are being taken care of. Yes, because then they can only afford someone who's able to meet the 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 money. So okay. money comes first. Yes. yes, we don't look at okay. This is if if there was an HR going through job this evaluation. So the, <laughs> I think a, a nanny would be at the manager you're a, you're manager a, level. Operations operations like a chief operation officer. Yes, CEO. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. If you look at CEO. Yeah. 
Yes, and sell out roles. Yes, yes, yes. You and so, your managing director. Yes, yes, something like yes, yes. Yeah. 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 So it's it's it, so the thing that I was going to actually say is mm. if we go back to the to the to to the if she yeah help yeah do you have help mm. and what does that help look like because mm. I remember I used to have a a, a day day park day mm. one. And she would she would tell me today I can't come in because I couldn't find someone to to live with the kids, yeah. and it became so pervasive to the point that I asked her what is the problem, mm-hmm. and she tell me we were a group of mothers mm-hmm. who go out to work mm-hmm. and would leave all our children mm-hmm. with this one person, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and that was the first time I'd heard of something like mm-hmm. that. They're there, and many. It's, you know, mm-hmm. ile siku we uko off, mm-hmm. you're taking care of all the other mm-hmm. children, mm-hmm. and we'll give you 200 bob yeah, each. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be like, okay, so you're being paid 6,000, that's 200 bob every day you're here. Mm-hmm. So what are you making? Mm-hmm. Do you have help? Yes. And what does that help look like? Ana kusaidia nini? Jupia mm. yeye, yeah. it's like a cycle. Mm. It's a... Uh, kuna watoto, ama let's just assume. Uh, mm. Pia yeye na mtoto. Mm. Mm. It's a long journey. Mm. And uh, lazima ule mwenye amekuandika. Mm. Sasa it's between you and mwenye amekuandika. So that pia we uangalie mgongo yako. Because mm. uko nyuma pia lazima ujue mkomu ni gani. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> eh, because pale nilikuwa ninafanya. I had to negotiate with, with the employer. Nika muambia. Nina mtoto mdogo. Na hui mtoto ni memuacha under care of someone mm. else. So we had to look at how much nitamulipa. Na ni manage to get diapers mm. milk. So that I can manage kulipa uyu mtu. Na ni manage kulipa hizi vitu na at least some, some, mm-hmm. uh, something ibaki kidogo. So mm-hmm. we had to sit at the table na tuka negotiate. So we started some. Though oh. I know there are few. Ya yeah, kikuambia anataka fanya kazi wa 10k na hiyo story ya memaliza. Mm-hmm. But sasa ukiangalia mgongo yako unapata ni ngumu. Mm-hmm. I think that's where we have a problem. Utapata mtu sasa. Because ilimulazimu achukue tu hiyo kazi point utapata. This domestic worker, maybe anapigiwa kelele over petty issues. Mm. So ile stress anaitoa kwa hawa watoto wa mwenyewe. Because anajaribu kufikiria wangu nyumbani, unajua sana kuja na hiyo mental problem. Because ameacha mtoto without one, two, three. Amekuja hapa, ajaribu so that to get one, two, three again. But again, these kids to some point wanasumbua mm. nao anapata hiyo mental problem so unapata yeah inakuwa yeah, inakuwa like a circle, circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. so what um the question that now we've asked in terms of you know we're going into that policy mm. advocacy space <laughs> but before that i think i can ask both of you how can we better support domestic workers and their families and what opportunities and solutions are available to that mm-hmm. so from employer mm. from okay I think we have we have some arrows, we call them five arrows in, in the care economy. Mm-hmm. One is recognizing them. So just the fact that they're an invisible group, mm-hmm. even um, when the country is doing its economic analysis, mm-hmm. there is now the push to recognize housework, whether by a domestic worker or by a stay-at-home mm-hmm. mom, a stay-at-home dad. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's because the fact that someone is caring for children at home or whoever staying at home, they are ensuring that either someone else is able to be maybe at peace and, and bring more income. Or they're also, you see, these children are the, we call it uh, dividend, uh, the economic dividend of the country. Mm. So come on, answer with the wrong start. Let's say their nutrition is not good, their mm. mental health, mm. they're abused. You end up with a population that is affected from yeah. the beginning. Yeah. yeah. So that recognition is one. The second one is reward. Mm. So what is the minimum pay? In Kenya, we are at 15,000 plus official income. Mm. How many of us who are in working class? 
pay that amount. Pay that amount, mm-hmm. yeah. Because mtu anasema huyu ametoka ushangua na experience tamwanzia na 6000. Ama you take an underage which is illegal. Um so we like for us in Nyerai home care we have a minimum that we we say if you can't afford the minimum pay then that's, that's the fine. But 15000. 15. Yeah. Then the so we are talking about rewarding and rewarding can be in cash or kind. Mm-hmm. For example, she said uh, they have children at home. Some of this uh, maybe require a one-off fee or they require clothes or they require things, things that you, even just giving someone off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that they're able to rest, they're able to do other things. Then the other one is about redistribution. So we talk about the amount of work that's at home. Someone has a washing machine, but they will say, msichana washing, Mkon, okay. yeah, because they think <laughs> yes yeah so <laughs> so you get a very tired person who is able to yet you're able to make their workload lighter mm. so they're able to give more care to even for them themselves mm. yeah um then we are also talking about uh looking at redistribution we're talking about um not just equipment, even men coming in on board. So our social norms is that caring for children or caring for the house is a woman's domain. Yes. Yeah. So both the father and the mother have gone out to work. Mm. But when they both come back in the evening, you'll find it's yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are <laughs> make up. So we're talking about also breaking gender norms. We are talking about better work policies mm. so that you're able to get better maternity Flexible. care. Yeah, Flexible. yeah. Flexible. Flexible work hours for mm. the mothers or even I've seen paternity for some organizations that are now extending. Yeah. Um, if only it also translates towards lightening the mm. load at home. But generally looking at how do we, how have we conditioned ourselves that this is expectation of, of women. Mm. And then looking at now things that are affecting um, the other things that will affect, like how do we lift people out of poverty? Because mm-hmm. in Kenya, no one wakes up saying, I'm going to be a domestic worker as yeah. I grow up. Yeah. yeah. But in the UK, people <coughs> people study to be domestic or to be nannies. Mm-hmm. There are graduates who leave graduate work to become uh, professional nannies. And that's because the profession has been dignified it has been quantified, yeah. it is paid well. So these are people who come with that experience. And then it's also even you as an employer able to say, these are your key performance mm-hmm. indicators. Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and they have a way to, um, they have a resort or somewhere where they are able to to convey their issues if they have any. So here it's, I think uh, she'll talk a bit about the unions. But it's not as strong as there in the West. Mm-hmm. So how do we get to that level where it is a choice, where someone is proud to say, this is the career I'm, I'm going yeah. for. And we are getting to see certification now coming mm-hmm. on board. Now we have, NITA has certified um, a certified course on domestic management. Mm-hmm. Yeah, most of it has been for the GAF. Or for the, Tell the people who are listening what NITA is. So NITA is the <laughs> <laughs> National Institute. Uh, eh? National Institute uh, Training Authority. Training of yes. Yes, yes, it's the government body that supervises or looks at um, non courses that are maybe at certificate level. Mm-hmm. And so we now have a properly recognized certification for domestic workers. But that means that if I come, for example, that's our strategy. And from this month, uh, we are taking our first cohort mm-hmm. of graduates. But now when I come to you, I mean, and I say, Amina, my girls have Anita certified. Mm. It means their minimum pay should be this okay. amount. Mm. Yeah, on a scam terms. I know. Yes, let's, yes. Yeah. yeah. So we do not appreciate <laughs> the kind of um, input that domestic workers do for us as mothers. And thus we are willing to really talk about peanuts when it comes to reimbursing them, when it comes to the environment in which they work. Mm. And so I usually say there's a lot of um, human rights violations within our homes, unfortunately. And what people don't recognize is that this person, you're entrusting the children to them. These are small minds. Mm. These minds are malleable. Mm. It's like children are born with a blank slate. Who are we exposing our children to? So when we see it that way from a child's point of view, as a mother, you will 
get to know Maureen. Where does Maureen come from? How many of us even know our second, the second name of our our domestic I mean, workers? We, because we took their their IDs, <laughs> which is also <laughs> illegal. Yeah, people are keeping. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. Photocopy. Yeah, we were like yeah. know, asking yeah. them. Uh, give me your yeah. clearance. Yes, yeah. yeah. All those things. That yeah, hundred percent. And you know, you're are. doing it from your own security, yeah. not because you want to know more. Yeah. yeah. So we want to say, how can you break that barrier that you see Maureen as an, a fellow mother, if mm -hmm. they're mothers, you see Maureen as a human being, you see Maureen as a very big resource towards helping you yeah. mother your children. But again, we have to also ask. Mm. That it's it's not everyone who's like Maureen mm. in the, in the, in the mm -hmm. yeah. sector. Yes. yes. So there must be a reason why uh, employers have become the way they are. Mm. If you go to the groups, you will hear so many people mm. sit down yeah. fair, sit down mm. fair. Yeah. See, do uh, you know? I'm not going to do X. I'm not going yes. to do Y. Sit at top of bureau. <laughs> yes, because these people, these these women also have it. Yeah. Mm. yeah, they come from a point of view of trauma. Mm. Because you know, this woman, I paid for her. She's called me. Mm -hmm. She's conned me. Mm. She's done. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 You know, mm. such mm. things. Mm. So there must be a reason uh, as to as to where that came from mm. and where do you think it came from. I think that goes with the personality. Unazapata mtu mzuri, unazapata mtu mbaya. Na ni mtu mbaya kwa sababu labda kuna mental issues. Mm. Amefukuzwa na mumewe, mm. na watoto, ama amefiwa, ama ana mume sawa ila hasaidiki. Mm. So it's like hadi nimeacha boma yangu kuja kufanya hii kazi. So huyo mm. mtu mentally hayuko vizuri. Mm. Ama mume sasa ameniacha, ah watoto ndalea vipi na nimewaacha penye nimewaacha. Huyo mm. mtu mentally hayuko vizuri. Mm. So finally utapata huyo mtu ana yell at your kids. And it is not that mother that you will like. So finally unapata even employer sasa anasema eh ni yake kutoa mtu biuro ama kukuwa na house manager unapata pia na yeye anapata hiyo mm. stress mm. because now she doesn't know what to expect next yeah mm. but is it because also the that 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 person that you're hiring is not looking at you as a mother as well mm. you know because you know there are people who are mothers but they don't want to mother yes how are you in how are you uh, uh, let me not say that it sounds so bad how are you like they just don't want to do it and then whether it's your kids or my kids, I just don't want to do it. it just doesn't feel like that. Mm -hmm. And so do we also give those people space? Yeah, so we really uh, need to find out what's up. Yeah. Because, <laughs> like in our place, we interview. And there are yeah. some employers who refuse to place yeah. money. Yeah. 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 yeah, because you just... Kuna mtu atakuambia, utakuja kwangu, utavaa uniform, mm. but ile uniform uyu mtu anapewa. I was talking to them yesterday. Mtu anasema sawa, mtu anakuambia kwangu lazima utavaa uniform. Mm. But when you go to kupewa hiyo uniform, eko na kitaki hapa na hapa kuku ingine kuko empty. Mm. So, what happens? Mm. Finally, uyu mtu atasema, you dress badly in my house. Mm. I don't know, kanguo ni kenye kame choka na maisha. Mm -hmm. So finally, sawo japo kuwa ungependa kubaa uniform, but again, ata iyo, iyo, you Colleges. to be reserved, iyo, wewe iyo heshima yako hakuna. But again, you look at yourself and you're like, even if I'm a house manager, this is beyond me. Mm -hmm. So unapata wei mtu pia kidogo, anasumbuka kimawazo. Mm -hmm. Yes. You were saying about... Yeah, I was saying... Um, we we have experience in six years. Actually, I have a, <laughs> on speed dial, I have the nearest OCS number. Mm -hmm. That's the number of times we've gone to the police station. Mm -hmm. Either employer, employee. Both. Mm -hmm. I would say mostly on the employer side mm -hmm. because people with power, in this case, the employer, yes. feel they can do anything to mm -hmm. the employees. Yes, so yes. you see people are being uh, dismissed at 10 p.m. at night mm -hmm. and someone is staying in Runda, mm -hmm. you know, where do you expect this person to go? Mm -hmm. Or without pay, or you get mm -hmm. deduction. Maybe you've been told kuna uniform, but unakuta imekato kwa mshare yako. Mm -hmm. Even our agency fee, and we're very clear, our agency fee is only paid by the employer. Mm -hmm. You don't deduct unless someone has 
has left without notice. Yeah, okay. We do not need that. Um, so you get, um, we've seen sexual harassment, we've seen physical violence. Um, it's only that now the domestic workers do not have a mtetezi. And that's why mm-hmm. some of us are very passionate about providing that professionalism. Yes. Uh, we also have employers who have not worked on themselves in terms of their issues because people are fighting in yes, homes. Yes. Yeah? yeah. So you you already have issues uh, maybe on relationship or work-wise or whichever other stress, alcoholism, drugs. We had to rescue someone who was in, you know, in a house where the guy was injecting drugs. Mm-hmm. Um, the constant here is you. Yeah. It cannot be all these people. Or you're locking away your food. So just some other conditions that we find if it happened to you as a yeah. person, you would not... Uh, so dignity. Yeah. Dignity, 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 exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Respect. Respect. Yeah. Values that align with human rights. Uh, and I, I, I put this quote here. Uh, Asking the question is, Domestic paid domestic work. We're talking about paid domestic work. Yes. yes. Is it a feminized, highly feminized sector? And the answer is yes, yes. because the majority of workers in this field are women. Mm. And according to the International Labour Organization, women make up to 80% of the global domestic workforce. What this means is because historically women have been associated with caregiving and domestic duties, which is what we discussed. But then, moreover, domestic work has been viewed as women's work, therefore undervalued and underpaid, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the global economy has undergone significant changes in recent decades with women entering the workforce, which is what we said. Mm -hmm. But the feminization of the domestic work has had significant implications for the rights and working conditions Mm -hmm. of these domestic workers. Mm -hmm. But due to the gendered nature of their work, domestic workers are now facing discrimination mm-hmm. and exploitation mm-hmm. yes. and when you look at it it's exploitation from both sides exactly yes. you're exploiting i feel there's some sort of exploitation there mm. based on the fact that this person doesn't know their rights yes mm-hmm. yeah mm. um we had an interesting conversation about with sex workers mm. and they have a very strong sex uh sex worker association, association. Yes, I know it. um mm-hmm. Associations that support the domestic work are they strong enough? When kusema, when you stuck your employer, you know, mm. I know you can do that to the chief. You can go mm, to the chief mm, of that. Mm. I don't know. In it, what? The word. location. Location. The, the word. Yeah. And the word. You can stuck your employer the, to the chief, but how many people know that? And how many times can you do that? Yeah. Neo kesi yako inendaapi. Mostly it doesn't go anywhere mm-hmm. because you know now the lawyer has the power. So finally, who saidizi amefukuzwa bila kulipwa and that is it. Ame harasiwa sexually and that is it. Yani it goes unnoticed and end up suffer from inside peke yake. So I think we really need to push up for the policy in terms of the domestic work rights mm-hmm. so that maybe they be paid better they be respected but again the those organizations that can speak for the domestic workers i don't know where they really are because we really need to find out from there where where are they what are yeah. what are they doing <laughs> in order to ensure that there is a voice yeah. for the domestic workers because each single day we have these issues amefukuzwa amepigwa hajalipwa ama analipwa underpaid and it is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, one of the things that I see, and especially in the era of social media, is people putting up someone's photo and the ID and now saying this person has done do this. Yeah. yeah. And you, those are, very, it's violating uh, yeah. the rights, is it privacy. The employment Act, no. That so is even never... data protection, even the data protection laws, because you've not been taken to court and and uh, you know, judgment has proven that you're guilty. Yeah. It, the guilt is from because I said mm. you took my dress, mm. you get or yeah. you did this to my child. Yeah. Um, because there are proper ways of there are legal recourse Which for are? these things. For example, going to the police first, you go re- uh, register your complaint, mm. an investigation is done, and this is taken to court, mm. and judgment is uh, you know the court mm. case goes on. Yeah. Um, so this this thing of uh, 
the way women, we formed WhatsApp groups, we mm. formed Facebook groups. We are parading people's names, people's photos, because you they don't have a right of reply. They are not, not in legal. those groups. It's not legal. So it's not legal. Yeah. Not do that. Yeah. Um, the, other, the other thing that I'm seeing here is the proposed domestic workers bill for 2019. Is that a... It's the first time I'm hearing of it. I don't <laughs> yeah. think. I don't I think I've not heard. Yeah. yeah. The proposed dom dead, domestic man. workers bill for it's 2019. Dead. The Kenyan government proposed a bill to regulate employment of domestic workers and provide them with labor protection and social security. I think security that's benefits. never saw the light of day. <laughs> because we are evaluating yeah. in that space. There's mm. a project we are part of uh, in terms of certificate, skilled, skilling domestic workers mm. and uh, looking at the legal documents behind that are available it wasn't one of them it's not even them. yeah i think maybe it was suggested but i didn't see okay and then i think also rightfully so they fall under the employment act mm. it's, it's just that people are not following mm. the employment act they don't think this is employment that yeah. formal employment formal you get so because what does formal employment look like um it requires employ employers, so the Employment Act of 2007, has mm. it? Yeah. Mm. This law sets out minimum employment standards for all workers in Kenya, mm. including domestic workers. Mm. It requires employers to provide written contracts. Mm. To have a written contract? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minimum wage, are you paid in which? Yes, we have. Overtime pay. Yeah, the domestic work or only if I, a few. If I overtime, we are only a few. So in the contract, you're supposed to have written yeah means that you're you're working from you've worked yeah in, there's in, there are in, some in, in you worked nine to five yeah yeah so uh, the assumption <laughs> is that domestic work is nine to five yes. and that's the wrong assumption because if you look at someone who lives with you what time do they wake up most likely they wake up before five yeah. what time do they go to sleep Ten. and they know people argue oh i'm providing housing and food Ooh, those yeah. are legal requirements mm -hmm. it's not a favor mm -hmm. so i think the quantification maybe that's why there was an attempt to tease out domestic mm -hmm. work to address because you don't stay in your employer's house if you're employed mm -hmm. yeah you don't have to wake up if the child or the employer <laughs> cries in the middle of the <laughs> night so i think the the uniqueness of the working hours and working situation becomes very tricky and so the um, the reason why there's that argument of uh, what is over time yeah 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 and, and do we is, even appreciate that this these people are working for us over time yeah so yeah. i mean it's 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 what should be stipulated in the yes right? yeah because once and that's why you don't want to have a contract yeah, yeah. that's why you don't want to write a contract with mm, this person mm. whereas you in your nine to five you're like i have, you to have, have to a contract. Yeah, yeah. send me terms of mm. uh, you know yeah. payment and yeah. things like that so it's it's what we say even statutory deductions people are not exactly paying. so that's yeah. actually what we have here which is mm. an hif do you mm. give your your other wife domestic worker Mm. NHIF. There are those classes that there are class that do, mm. but others it's most like, don't. Most don't. Mm. Actually, they tell you to go and pay for yourself. Ideally, yeah. it is it, employer it, it, it must be. It there. comes from the employer side. Mm. Yeah. 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 And this is basically what we are calling commoditized care work. Mm. So that's the articulation that I was mm. talking about mm. earlier. Mm -hmm. What is commoditized care and what does that look like and how do we as employers or people who actually have domestic workers, we're talking about overtime, we're talking about con contracts. Mm. Those are things we're going to talk about here. And then when you go mm. back to our homes, mm. you're like, Kesho Wendy mm. yes. you know what mm. I mean? Yes. So commoditized care work refers to the phenomenon of caring labor being treated as a commodity. Mm. Uh -huh. So just as sex work is transactional, mm. commoditized uh, Caring labor is a commodity mm. that can be can be bought and sold in a marketplace. Mm. So paid care work such as domestic work, mm. child care, mm. elder care are undervalued and underpaid. So mm. under commoditized care work, caring labor is reduced to a market transaction. Mm -hmm. So I pay you, mm. do the work that you're supposed mm -hmm. to do mm -hmm. without thinking about the, mm -hmm. the rights mm -hmm. of this person mm -hmm. and what the, that looks like. So we were... You were going to tell me about the the different, because we, we've heard about Kudai here. What other unions exist? Or 
association deepak maybe talk about deepak, deepak is in terms of finance for them to save mm. but uh What's in terms of food? their mouthpiece the domestic professional association of kenya so it's new it started yeah. last year yeah it's but it's speaking up because it's for, it's has formed a circle mm. yeah it's so not there's a circle just for to help them to save yeah and, and it's yeah. growing it's growing it's but speaking they up. want to fight for their right maybe if somebody doesn't pay you where you mm. can go you mm. don't have that mouthpiece mm. maybe only kama unajua mlango ya leba maybe mm. unaweza enda kujitetea mm. yeah yeah we are also trying to set up um an association for placement agencies mm. because of the negative perception that's out there of course there are unethical practices so again also from the agency side mm. once we have this in place then we are able to call out rogue agents we are able to uh, have a code of practice mm. uh, we are able to uh, try and transition people towards skilled uh -huh. certification yeah so that um, as the association for the workers are also doing their part mm. for us on the entrepreneurship side on mm. the employment side mm. now are uh, doing our work and all this now much towards lifting the standards and professionalizing mm. the industry But so, there is still a problem with the society mm. because this remains invisible work mm. and nobody will want you to wake up and tomorrow say I, I work as a domestic worker mm. it's like that one is mm. no mm. yeah it sounds so bad it sounds i have a cousin who said ali uh, we stayed with her for like a month so i asked her ah tukikotafutia kazi ya nyumba ufanye ukifanya will you go akasema baba yangu alisema nisifanye kazi ya nyumba why eh, they are mistreated they are underpaid mm -hmm. so you see if if we can change the perspective right from the society mm -hmm. then domestic work will remain just like any other work but again there are those challenges for example in towns of maternal leave mm. domestic work can't come go home for six months then come back mm. it's it's a kind of job that does not your sustainability yake we still need to find the ground mm. yes yeah it remains invisible yes it remains undervalued mm -hmm. it remains underpaid mm -hmm. and I thank you mm -hmm. <laughs> both for highlighting the differences and also speaking from the point of view of of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I think there's more work to be done, you're right. There's more. There's advocacy and policy there's a gap mm -hmm. which I think you've been brilliantly filling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, the, you've been a mouthpiece for health. Yeah. I think you can turn and shift yeah. and be the mouthpiece for mm -hmm. for domestic work because I, I I feel like there's a gap. I I, I it's, big. it's, it's big. a big gap. Yeah. Even maybe you've said maybe you want to briefly talk about the international women's day what what we did mm. oh okay we were looking at the the unpaid care work mm. uh in terms of domestic work it remains invisible you work for long hours you are underpaid uh still nobody recognizes what you are doing mm. you bado tambiwa hakuna kitu ulifanya the whole day so there is that The, the, we had that uh, uh, in march mm. yeah march in eight. march mm. we were looking at that and we are trying to come up with a policy that at least can uplift the the domestic work industry but again i have a question mm. somebody was asking what of those who are hiv positive they are discriminated mm. so on a part to some point they can't say i'm positive mm. uh, my question is what are we going to do so that even them even if they are positive they can still deliver mm. and get because when say to kisema we are positive then nobody will want you to hire you mm. So, I mean it's the same thing that when you're telling an employer you're pregnant. Oh, yeah, it's no the same who's yeah. Who's domestic or who's pregnant? pregnant. Oh. Yes. So there's that part of discrimination so on a part at some point they don't want to talk about that. But again, they are human as long as they're under medication I think they should be given a yeah. chance. So the challenge a big challenge that I see here is no one to advocate. Yes. No, and and government has 
is putting out policies to include mm-hmm. domestic workers mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. following up not being following active up. Yeah. mobilizing uh, activating just to make sure that these people know where to go yes. and when i say yes. these people sorry i mean domestic workers yes. know where to they can to, go. to lodge complaints or mm-hmm. to, to you know to have someone speaking up on their behalf so there is the gap mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i appreciate you coming here and mm-hmm. the one thing that i said about this episode was about articulating someone sitting there thinking that's what they meant mm-hmm. that's what they were saying mm-hmm. and hearing directly from you saying Mm-hmm. Just in your own voice. Yes. Yes. So yes. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. I love it. Yeah. Thank you so much for giving me your time, yes. your energy, mm-hmm. your love. Yeah. And just with so much gratitude, um, I want you to say the last thing to, you know, about this, about what you feel, mm-hmm. about reproductive labor, mm. whether as an employer mm. or as a person who's getting <laughs> mm. you know mm. and then for you what does you've said reproductive labor is invisible uh-huh. what would be your ideal situation in a couple of years let's say you've been you've been taken and you've been told where well, basic were their voice mm. so i think uh it's a privilege to me god has blessed me i wished but then God granted me that grace mm. because I was working. Sometimes we don't get that off because you've left your family. Mm. You're on the other side. I wish, but since I'm here now, I will push for it. But again, I don't know with the government because you ask the government mm. in our company, we will look into it. But if only they can listen to the domestic workers. Mm. Because I think domestic workers were the greatest investors. Mm, 80%. 80% of us. (laughs) We are are the workforce. We are the driving force. So I think we can be given that chance. We do what we can do best. Be paid better. Treated better. And we can move on in a good way. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Someone asked me, if all domestic workers put down their tools tomorrow, this country will come to a halt. Well, I disagree. You sure? I disagree. Okay. We did it for two years, or at least one year of pandemic, uh-huh. to manage. We became teachers. Mar- but you had your domestic work at I home. Didn't. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, at some point, uh, it, it, the government shut down. Yeah. And we didn't know what was happening. Uh-huh. And at some point, we had to say... I can't come to your house. Yeah. And for me, I had mm. a, I had a day. Day bad, day. yeah. So she just told me, I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, uh, I'm so scared. Mm. And even us, we were scared. We were like, mm-hmm. you're going to Kangwara, mm. you're going to Madara, you're going to Kibera. I don't know what you're going to bring to my house. Yeah. So for like six months, I'll tell you for free. No, but you are not required to go out. You get? Yes. That was the difference. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So for example, here you're required to come and do this shoot. Mm. You don't have anyone at home. So the COVID situation was unique in terms of we were all staying at home. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But now I if, also if, disagree. If they weren't, and then uh, how many actually have day bugs with children? Let's yeah. say. I, I, there are uh, not many. Most I disagree people have mostly because women can pivot. I, 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 shoot me if you will, but if you had to do something, I feel like, I feel like strongly, how will how will the people who manage. work in offices you how will they manage. operate? For example, so I'm going to start by putting yeah, a disclaimer. Yeah, disclaimer. Yeah, a disclaimer. Mm. I'm very fortunate to work for an employer um, who understand what who understands what Flex- flexibility yeah. looks like, yeah. and is a, and they are a very big proponent of childcare mm. and it out, mm. and also the spaces that I frequent these mm. days, mm. Um, and and we are mm. so f- the feminist funding space mm. or the feminist mm. um, organizations that are now talking about diversity, inclusion, mm. and equity. Mm. Um, we, as activists mm. in the gender space, mm. are holding them accountable. Exactly. What does DEI look yeah, like yeah. for me? Exactly. But you see, that's that's me being an activist. Uh, yeah. Uh, like activating and advocating for my yes. own space. Yes. Because if you say that you're talking up and you're using feminist... Um, principles mm. at work mm. or you're using gender at work frameworks mm. then you can't tell me that i can't have childcare. Mm. i'm supposed to be able to put childcare on my 
on my calendar and mm. say I'm not available at this time. Mm. I'm supposed to have the six six months of leave paid, mm. whatever that looks like, mm. whatever is in the DI mm. um, mm-hmm. policy. You hold mm. you accountable to mm. it, and mm. I can even sue you if you, yeah. you know, if you don't if you do don't, those things. Yeah. But again, yeah. disclaimer that's, in red. That's, I that's, come from um, a place of privilege yeah, where I can say yes. these things and hold these people yeah. accountable yeah. because of just basically what we are advocating yeah. for. Mm. You have to walk your exactly. talk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In fact, that the the um, if you remember the hours that I talked about, mm. yeah, one of them was that the policies, even the social norms. Mm. So for me, the punchline is where we are at with with uh, most employers, we've not created that space where there's a lot of flexibility. And as such, a lot of delegation has gone to, of mothering. Mm. It's the reality. Mm-hmm. And it's easier actually mm. for you to say, uh, I have a good nanny, nini, but we've actually delegated mothering mm. for whatever other reasons. Um, so my punchline, especially to our employers, is do you know the person who's taking care of your children? Do you have a relationship with them? And do you care? Mm. For them as a person. For them as a person. Because once you look at it from a human interest point of view, then the commodity bits fades. So it's just to say this Maureen who's working for me, Who's taking care of Maureen's child? Mm. And whoever's taking care of Maureen's child has another child. These are the children who are going to, together with your children, build mm. this country. So what kind of legacy do I want? As a mothering and providing someone an opportunity to help me mother, mm. then what kind of mothering am I ensuring that they're also doing to their children? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I don't even know what else to Malaysia with that. But yes, mm. just understand who do you know who's looking after your kids mm. and how have we delegated mothering. So thank you so much for that. Mm. Thank you so much for having us, you know, at having us having, having you both <laughs> thank you. on this episode. And yeah, I hope we're going to keep sure. this yes. up. Mm. We'll yes. share it widely. Mm. We're going to share your handles mm. as well. We give us and yeah. looking We'd forward love to more of these conversations. Yeah. Mm-hmm.